Hi, I'm Pamela Poole and I live an amazing life as an artist and an author. I am having an amazing day today because I am ready to release a short series of art appreciation videos. This happens at a time when I have released my first devotional on Monday. It's called Inspired Artistry, Embracing the Creative Calling. And I thought perhaps some of the readers might be hungry for a little bit of art, history, and appreciation after reading that book. It's not exactly about art appreciation or art history, but um, maybe applying a Christian worldview to some of the art movements, the artists, the artworks throughout history would be something they would be hungry for now, especially since in the United States we are under stay-home orders. Um, to sort of control the virus and sometimes these days for a lot of people are feeling like the movie Groundhog Day when the day just repeats over and over and over. So one of the things we can do is in, to expand our experiences and our mind and things that we want to know, things we didn't have time for before. And that's what I hope that this will accomplish. This art series is for teens to adults, um, simply because um, I will be sensitive about topics and I will be always clean with language, but I also, um, sometimes when I'm in teacher mode, I will speak with more of a professory sound that isn't quite as understandable for kids with a younger, lower vocabulary. So Paris, I'll leave it to you as to whether you want to share these videos with your kids or you just want to enjoy them on your own. I will post study guides on my websites. I will give you the link at um, whenever I post this so that you will know where to go and they might um, be helpful if you do want to share this with teens, not the video part, but just the art related part. I'll even give you some suggestions of how you can turn it into an art lesson. For now, let's get started. I want to keep this as short as I can. I could talk so long about this art movement I'm getting ready to show you. It's the Pre-Raphaelite movement in art history, but I am going to try to keep these between 10 and 12 minutes. So I, I, it may sound like I'm rushing. I don't mean to do that, but I do want to be conscious of your time. The first painting that I want to tell you about is The Light of the World, and mostly, I think a lot of you have seen this. Mostly you will understand that this is Jesus and is depicting his light. It is him knocking on the door of your heart, just as scripture says that he knocks asking to come in. This is a painting by William Holman Hunt, my favorite Pre-Raphaelite painting. And um, not only do I love it because of what it is, just the significance of the Bible theme, but it's just a masterful piece of work. It's so alluring. It, you really are drawn in to want to know more about what is happening in this painting. And so um, it is one of my favorites. Um, during the time period when this was painted, let me give you a little bit of background for the Pre-Raphaelites and why this painting would possibly have been controversial. The time period is between the Pre-Raphaelites arose in 1848, which was infamous for upheaval in Europe. In England, it was the um, Industrial Age, which lowered one class of people, but it elevated the, the social middle class. So there was a, a small society of middle class people who were ordering portraits, and um, the more flattering you could be as an artist with their portrait, the more money you were going to make. Another perversion in that era was that people wanted uh, brown, dark washes over their paintings, almost as if they saw everything in life through a haze of coal dust from the Industrial Revolution. So the Pre-Raphaelites wanted to escape that. That wasn't all popular, and John Ruskin, one of my favorite art historians, stepped in to help the Pre-Raphaelite cause of idealism and meaningfulness in art. And he said that this particular painting was one of the most noble depictions of a religious theme in art history to that point. This was painted in 1854. And I want you to keep this in mind when we get to our next paintings. 
Um, this particular artist, William Holman Hunt, also traveled to the Holy Land and painted things like the scapegoat, all kinds of religious things. I like this one, the lost sheep. And he somehow managed to put a personality into the faces of these sheep. Um, you would think that pictures of sheep would be boring, but not this one. I want you to keep in mind this lost sheep and the wool that they would produce in the next painting that we're going to go through. And one of my favorites as well is another depiction of Jesus that I think, because we're getting close to Easter right now, I think a lot of you will appreciate this one. This is Mary on the ground and Jesus standing and stretching. And when she looks to the back wall, can you imagine the shadow that she is seeing? Would she remember this in days to come whenever her son was crucified on a cross? So this is also another one of my favorites, full of symbolism as well. One thing I want to mention to you is that in past times, art, a lot of artists put symbolism, cultural things, political things, and that sort of stuff into their paintings. These days we think about art as just something that brings us joy, you know, colors and shapes or a subject that we like. But back then, that's not what art was all about. That wasn't the vogue. There may have been people that did that sort of thing, but it wasn't something that came to light as being significant in any way. The next painting that I'm gonna show you is full of symbolism. And the reason that this is important is because this painting has a moral message, which may have been one of the reasons why the pre-Raphaelites were um, not very popular at that time until John Ruskin stepped in because some of the ideals that they promoted were moral and um, not everybody wanted to hear that. In fact, one of the things that was going on that was very popular in this time that this next painting is about is that there were gentlemen that kept a mistress in a certain section of town and um, uh, William Holman Hunt actually went to that section of town, rented a room, a house, to paint this next painting in that I want to show you. And then I want to tell you about the specific items in this painting that he wanted us to understand and to give us more um, moral insight about what's happening. This painting is called The Awakened Conscience, Awakening Conscience. And as you can see, it's pretty obvious that the young lady in this painting is, um, had a she's had a change of heart. And if you have any understanding of psychology at all, you can tell from her face, she's gone from whatever the situation is that she's in. She is not going to stay in it. Her position is that she is half arising and there's a glow on her face. Her eyes are seeing something far beyond the room that she is in at this moment. If you want to know where the light is coming from, from her face, on her face, because it is significant, there is a paint. There is a mirror behind her that is showing you the the window in front of her, and in William Holman Hunt's intentions, that was where the light of the world was coming through. Remember, I told you these were done the same year, and the light of the world is shining through that window onto her face, which causes it to glow and causes her to see things suddenly in a whole different way. The Holy Spirit is like that, isn't it? He teaches us and and leads us. Look at the um, other corner of the painting where there is some uh, unraveled wool uh, yarn lying there with the light suddenly shining on it. And remember I showed you the lost sheep, the painting of the lost sheep. This is reminiscent of the lost sheep and the light shining on them for salvation as well. Um, there are many other things in this painting that I want to just, I just want to pick out a few. Um, the morning glory on the piano that is a called the flower of deceit because it intertangles itself with other plants the music that's on the piano that they are playing and that the guy sitting in the chair is still singing and having a good time with is about a song about a young lady who is looking back regretfully on um, lost innocence of her childhood and down in another corner, there is a musical adaption at the, in those days when this was painted 
of a Tennyson work, a poem, about um, innocence into wretchedness. The discarded glove at this young lady's feet is a picture of what she will become if she doesn't escape her situation. And another um, note of escape is where the cat is toying with the bird in this painting. Um, it becomes distracted and looks up and away at her, and so the bird has a chance to escape. A lot going on in there, isn't it? Um, if you will notice on the young lady's fingers, there's a ring on every finger except her wedding finger. So from that, we know that the artist meant for us to understand this was the young gentleman's mistress. His hat and book on the table show that he is a visitor. He doesn't live there. Um, this is just an afternoon of pleasure for him. And his confident expression shows that um, he's happy in his situation. She is the one that is at a disadvantage. So, there are other things to be shown in this painting. I'll try to note them in a study guide to go along with it. And I hope that um, you will enjoy this series of art history, art appreciation videos that I'm going to do. Um, it just seemed like a good time with the release of the devotional to go into some of my favorite artists, art periods, art styles, and talk a little bit about how I see them through a Christian worldview and apply them to life. And so until next time, I thank you so much for joining me today. It's such a thrill to know that some of this could be a blessing to someone's life, especially if you're staying at home right now and things feel a little gloomy. Don't stay in that position. Go and be sunshine wherever you can. And also remember that the things you are doing now, the way you're spending your time, are going to be the well that you draw from whenever we are able to get out and about again. So stay safe, practice tips of being a sunshine and salt and light, and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.